Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Curtis Pike and I've got another Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial for you. Hell yeah, and this one I'm going to show you how to make your footage look like it's out of the 60s or 70s. I'm going to show you the old effect or the retro vintage effect. Now, I've gone ahead and selected some free stock footage just to get this going. So, we have a nice young couple in love in the park here and we're going to get going and we're going to make it look like this is shot in like 1977 outside of like a Led Zeppelin concert or something. So uh, let's go right into this, shall we? Uh, first things first, I want to add some contrast to this shot. This, it's it's nice, but you know, it's it doesn't quite pop to me. So um, let's go ahead and just add some of the RGB and I'm going to do it with an RGB curves here. And what you're going to see in a lot of old footage is a lot of the whites, the, the bright parts, actually kind of pop out. Um, they're blown out in, in, um, in video and photography terms. So I'm just going to up the master here. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, we're going to go there. Okay, that's pretty bright. I might want to bring that back down a bit here. And then the... Let's see about the darks. We're going to make the darks a little bit darker. Okay, so that's uh, that's not quite light enough. Okay, let's go with that for now. Okay, so we've added some contrast. We up the white intensity a bit, and uh, yeah, there we go. We're on our way to doing this. The second step you want to do is you want to add that tint. Um, so you go to the effects uh, panel here and you type in tint. Put that on your put the tint on and it automatically defaults to black and white. Now we don't want black and white. We want to go for a, uh, I guess more of a sepia type tone. Um, sepia is a little bit brownish, a little yellower as opposed to just straight up black and white because we're not from the 50s, this is like late 60s. So the film footage back then was was kind of, like I just saying, it was, um, ugh. It had a tint to it. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I'm just struggling over my words here. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and add that tint. Now, to change the tint, we want to map the black. So the black in the in the shot, we want the blacks to get sort of an dark orange, uh, I guess some darker sepia-ish style color. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, we're getting there. And for the whites, we want them to get a... a, a pretty like we want it to be close to white but we want to add a little bit of yellow tint in it so let's go with that see what we got okay you know what that's got a nice look to it that's kind of sepia now this is way over the top so we don't want to go a hundred percent so we want to blend this footage with the original footage so I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the tint down if we reduce it to zero it's a standard shot hundred percent it's there so let's see where we want it to look you know what that's starting to look that's looking pretty good, guys. That's looking pretty good indeed. That does give me the, you know, shot 30 years ago style uh, color effect. So there we go. Now, also, older footage, uh, let me just save that, pardon me. Older footage had a lot of, a bit of a blue color to it, too. So we've got it in some yellows and browns, but we haven't added in some blue. So let's go ahead and just do that. Now, to do that, you want to go to the effects panel here and type in fast color corrector add that on now this is a very minor very minor adjustment in fact it's arguable that you don't need to do it at all but we want to add a little bit of blue to this shot so let's go ahead take this here and move it to the right a bit now if you move it all the way to the right it's blue as hell right so you can see what it's doing red yellow blue green whatever but control Z to start it at the beginning and then we want to move it just a bit over so we've got some blue in the scene. That's probably enough for what we're looking to do. And it's a minor adjustment, so you know you might not even notice it. But, well, let's just see if you can see the difference. Off, on. Yes, you can definitely see the difference. So there you go. We've added in a little bit of blue. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to add in some noise or what we call grain. Now for people that are shooting today, if you shoot at a if you shoot in the dark for example and you, you you've got some footage, you often have to increase your ISO in order to let enough light in to get a picture and that results in grainy shots. Now old school lenses, uh, old school cameras, pardon me, from a long time ago, they had noise, so when you when you filmed it, you would get that grainy, 
scratchy look and we're gonna go ahead and add that in so to do that you type in noise here you grab the noise effect and you drop it on just like I did now couple things first off we don't want to overdo it like let's 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 go huge noise okay that's clearly not what we want um, so I'll just control Z that but we want to have a fair bit so let's go with let's say like 12 percent okay that's a little noisy now I'm using this on one fourth playback resolution let's go to full so you can see it a little better so if I hit play you should be able to see some of the scratchy noise uh, yeah, if you look careful, you'll see it in the background. But what you don't, what we don't want is we don't want to use color noise because I'll show you why. If we use it, if you, if I go up to 100%, you'll see the color noise. If I take that off, you just get black and white noise. And most cameras back in the day were sort of black and whitey slash um, sepia. So let's take out this color noise and go with regular noise. Now, what kind of effect do we got going on so far? Okay, we're getting there. Now, the next step you want to do is we want to crop this. The reason why we want to crop this or cut pieces off the edges is because old school film wasn't filmed on 16 by 9 ratio, aspect ratio, pardon me. That's what our current cameras do primarily, 16 9. If you upload something to YouTube, you want to be 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720, and that's 16 9. But that wasn't how film was done. So we're going to go ahead and cut some edges off to make give it that film look. So go to the pardon me, go to the effects panel here. Type in crop and drop that bad boy on there. Here we go. Now let's shut down the noise for now. We'll shut down the tint. So far so good. Now, to crop it, you kind of have to do this by eyeball. So let's say we want to crop, I don't know, for a 4 to 3 ratio, let's say 12 Mm, no, let's go with about 14% off the side, the left. So if we're on the left, we've got to do it to the right as well. Let's go 14, whoa, whoa, Nelly. 14 on the right. And then, of course, you have to have some cropped off the top. So we're going to give it a haircut of, say, I don't know, 6, 7%? Sure, let's see what 7% looks like. And you can always adjust this later based on, you know, the look you're going for. So there we go. Do we want to add some edges, feathers? Ooh, we kind of do, you know. Let's add some edge feather. That's a nice little effect. Um, that makes it less sharp. You'll see the edges get blurred a little bit. So we want that. We're going to blur it again in, the, in a future effect. But that looks nice. So let's close that up. Where are we now? Okay, well, we've got a crop. We've got that sort of filmish look. We've changed the color. Now, the next thing we want to do is roughen up the edges. We just sort of did that with that feather, but we can go ahead and add in roughen edges. So we want to make the edges around the film rougher. So drop that onto our little clip here. Now, this went red. You'll see that this line here went red. That means that this is an intensive effect, and it's going to take some, it's going to slow your computer down. This is going to require some processing. So, anyways. There are a bunch of different options for roughen, but we're just going to go with roughen for now. We're not going to get all rusty and, and silly. Um, you want to see that. Let's take a look at the border. Let's just go through the here. We want the border to be about 60. Let's go with 70. Now, that obviously looks kind of like a faded picture, and that's not what we want because this is being projected out of the film. But, uh, but bear with me. We're going to make some adjustments. Now, we can go with the edge sharpness. Do we want it to be really sharp or do we want it to be dull? Now, it starts off at 1, but we actually want to dull it because that way, let's just see here, where are we? 0.5? That's still not quite right. Let's see. Okay, let's dull it up a bit. Okay. Um, scale, this is a great one. You want to add scale because the bigger you get, you'll see that the edges sort of start to, instead of being spiky and and and, and jagged, they, they actually take on a softer, um, more, I guess, curvy look. So let's go ahead and just juice that up. Okay, that's good so far, but we actually still have to make a few more adjustments. We want to actually make the edges a little bit more blurry. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But... Let's just see. Let's just make a few more changes. Do we want to increase the fractal influence? 
Okay, no influence, full influence at 1.0. So you know what? Let's go down to like maybe 0.5. Okay, what do we got here if we hit play? Okay, it's it's still actually overloading the CPU here, but it's you know it's looking good. Um, stretching the width of the height. Do we want to do that? Mm, what do we got here? You know what? That's actually not bad looking. What do you think? We've got some edge blurring, yet, you know, it's still got that not imperfect asymmetrical look, but hey. Um, okay, and here's the, the final thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do an offset. So click on the, click on rough and edges. Now, you're going to see up in the top left corner, let's go to 50% so you can see better. Uh, you'll see this here is the offset. So I'm just going to control Z. Now, if we move it around the picture, watch this. As you move it around the edges, you'll see the edges actually sort of wobble. Now, old projectors, as you probably are well aware of, if you've even seen any of them, wobbled. And we want to animate this particular... Uh, yeah, we want to animate, pardon me, animate this over time so the edges wobble. So let's just go ahead and do that. So we're going to be on the first frame right here. And let's go ahead and make a keyframe for offset. So it starts there, and when it gets to the end of the end of the um, clip, uh, let's go back one frame. Pardon me. We want it to go all the way over to here, so it's just run its course. So this way, we're going to get some cool wobble effect into the film. So what does that look like? Let's see. Uh, I'm going to turn this down to one quarter so that it's not rendering everything super intensively, and you're only going to get one fourth of the uh, um, pixels. But here we go. Let's take a look. Okay, it's not bad. It's got the it's got the the grain. It's got the wobble. Uh, you'll see the edges sort of moving. It's not entirely what I want, so maybe we can make one more adjustment. What's what do we want? One do the complexity. Complexity means it moves a lot. If we do it to zero or to one, what does that look like? Let's just take a look. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Let's see what the border... Okay, the border goes in like that. That's kind of wonky. Um, so we're going to go back. But uh, you know what? This is this is okay so far. You know, we're, we're, we're getting there. Um, now, the next effect, because we're going to... We need to make some more changes, and we can always go back and, and adjust things if we need to, is we need to do something called an offset. Now, offset is what's going to allow us to get that projector look where the projectors like to flip up and down. You know how the the um, the projectors would, would go buggy, and then when they go buggy, you know, you would see all these flipping, flipping, flipping of the, of the, of the, um, of the clips. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I've added in offset. I might go back and make some changes to roughen edges at the end of the tutorial here. But here's offset in action. Watch. There's this way. This is to the right and to the left, but projectors didn't go that way. Projectors did this. Take a look. Here we go. You'll see what I mean. That's what projectors did. They went up and down. They didn't go sideways. So let's just go ahead and actually let me just go ahead and render this. I'm going to time this out in the, in the uh, and then I'll come back. Hang on. Let me just do a quick render. Okay, welcome back guys. So I did a quick render in to out. To do that, you can go up here to sequence settings, render in to out. The reason why I did that is it now memorizes all the effects basically. So all the changes we've made to it so far are actually accounted for. So when we make changes, you don't have to render all, I don't know, what do we got, like nine effects on there so far? So uh, we're looking good. So let's go back to the, we're going to go back to the offset. Yes, pardon me. So again, if we look at offset, watch what it does. You turn it to the right, and bang, you've got the offset effect where it looks like it's kind of flipping on a, going crazy on a film projector. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say, you know, it's going okay at this point, and then at the, let's say at like the five second mark, five seconds, sure, why not? Let's go to five seconds. To go back one frame, just click this back one frame, five seconds, the projector starts to go a little cuckoo. 
and that was extremely popular back in the day. So let's go ahead and animate this. So we want to click on this here and we want to animate shift center two. So click that. Now at this stage, it's it's fine. At let's say six seconds, it's I don't know. Let's go ahead and say six seconds. And yeah, okay, so in the last one second, it actually went through um, four flips for for whatever reason. So five forty. So ten eighty will be okay. Where are we? So there's one, two, three, four. And of course, because it's a projector, it doesn't go back to where it's supposed to be. Why would it? So let's say it goes to that point. And then a few split seconds later, it kicks back up and it over kicks so that a little bit of the bottom is showing. So there we go. And then we go forward. And then let's just say to show the effect how it works, it goes crazy again. One, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. It goes nuts. And then it stops, let's say at that point, and then it sort of corrects itself to whatever and then that's it so what would that look like let's take a look so it's, it's okay so far we're gonna add in some blur here so the the lines around oh wow the projector went nuts right Of course it did and it's back so that might be you know a little bit too fast there at that one point I think I've got you know one too many keyframes in there um, maybe we should delete that one I don't know let's see what that looks like Okay, it still goes a little buggy, but whatever, you know, you can do this however you see fit. But we want to create that effect. So now we've gone ahead and changed that so that it has the, you know, flicker effect. Now, the next thing we want to add on to this, let's see here, is we want to add in a directional blur. Because when it moves, you will notice that it actually just sort of, it moves, but it looks sharp. And anytime something is moving... It acquires a blur. It has to. So let's go ahead and move forward to this keyframe here. Now, let's say we're on that keyframe. And let's go ahead and add a directional blur. Just type in directional blur. Drag and drop that bad boy on there. And let's see here. This one's tricky. So, you know, you want to sort of season this to taste. So at this point, Okay, and it starts to move there. So let's add a blur when it starts to move. Let's say we got a 13 degree blur. And when it moves, let's see what that looks like. Is it is it catching? Hang on. Sorry, guys. And we haven't set a blur length, so let's do a blur length of, I don't know. You want to do five? Let's see what five looks like. So this isn't right because this actually adds a blur to the whole scene. Take a look. So, okay, so the blur's on, blur off. So unless you want that blurry look, which some, you know, some footage had it. So if you don't, I am actually going to delete that one rather than and just start over. So let's go ahead and move forward to the first keyframe. And you can do that just right here. So where are we? Where are we? It's going to move this so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, and presto, right about here, this is where things start to blur. So now, we're going to go ahead and toggle on the animation and the blur length. So at this point, we start getting some blur. So as soon as it starts moving, stepping forward, stepping forward until the... Okay, it's moving now. We're going to add in a direction of about... I think we're, we want it to go with like 13% and we want to go with a blur length of about, I don't know, let's say 5, sure, let's see what that looks like. Blur, okay, so now it's a little blurry. And then when it stops, right before it stops, so right before this keyframe here, we're going to add a new keyframe. Clicking this button here, it says add or remove keyframe. And this one's going to be 13%, so it's going to be the same. And then on this one, it's going down to zero. So it's going to go back to zero, so there will be no effect added. 
So I'm just going to zero it out. And I'm not real good with the sensor here, so let's just go in and type it. Blur length, direction, zero, zero. So we've added in directional blur to this crazy film effect. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Boom. Okay. And looking good, looking good. So we're going to just do one more thing, maybe two. We want to add a flickering light to this. We have to do that. So let's go ahead and add the lighting effect because old projectors, when these things started moving and going buggy, the light would get, the intensity of the light would change as well. So here we go. Type in light in the effects here. Grab lighting effects and let's drop that on. Now, that is not what we are looking for, clearly. Um, having a weird spotlight in the top right is just it's a no-go. But let's go ahead and right when the first keyframe starts, and right about there. No, we've got to go one more frame forward, I believe. Yes, now we're in the middle of the frame here, so we are on the keyframe. This is where the lighting effect will go in. So, we don't want that light. Automatically, you want to click on lighting effects, go to light 1, and you're going to see that it defaults with a spotlight. We don't want that. We want an Omni light in this case. So now we've got our Omni light, and that basically it lights up the center, but it also sends out ambient light to the edges. So we're going to decrease the um, radius down a bit. This is a bit too much. Uh, let's see. Let's go with something like that, and then it just sort of goes out towards the end, maybe a little bigger. This, of course, you can just go ahead and adjust to taste. Now. At this point, the light starts to go buggy because the flick, the film um, recorder thingy starts going nuts. So we are going to go ahead and animate this light now. In fact, we're only going to animate the intensity because it's the intensity that goes nuts. So right here, click on the intensity, and let's start it off on a low intensity. Move forward a little bit. Okay, it's going, going, okay, at this point, let's say it goes really, really intense. Boom, intense. Move forward a few frames, down in less intensity, it goes nice and low. Forward a few frames, up in intensity, up to like 52. Frame or two, goes down again to like 17 or 19, 20, whatever. Forward a couple frames, up. Forward a couple frames, down. So it's going nuts. Like you're basically the the uh, projector's gone cuckoo while we're doing this. So we'll go up, and I know you guys can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just sort of eyeballing this. This will actually lead to um, a useful <laughs> end shot. So let's say 23, and does it keep going? Okay, 23, and I apologize if this is taking me a little bit longer, but this is how you have to do it. There's no real easy way around this. Say it goes down to the 16. It stops right around here, and this is where it stops, and we want the light to be 23. And then go a frame or two forward, and then we're going to turn it off. We're going to turn the, basically we turn the light off. The light goes to, like, well, let's see. Well, what's the default value? Was it like 20? Okay, 23 looks good. So let's take a look at that in action. Does the light go crazy right about here? Let's take a look. Okay, um, the light does go crazy, although it needs to... Um, I need to probably slow down a few of those rotations. But if you watch this number here where my cursor is, that's basically saying the light's going off, bright, less bright, bright, less bright. So that is generally how you create a old film effect. I'll render this out. Let's take a look here. Let's see if I can render it, and then I'll show you in real time. So I'm just going to go, hang on, guys, while I click render into out, and then I'll come right back, and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, guys, welcome back. We've gone ahead and done some of the changes. Let's go ahead and see what our final so far take looks like. Let's go ahead. Okay. Got some green. Change the color. Projector goes nuts. A little bit of light flashing. And presto. 
that looks like the old footage. Now let's go ahead. I'm just going to grab that. Um, I'm going to grab the original footage just so that I'll put that in there so you can see what the original looks like compared to the old. So, original footage, old footage. Original, old. Guys, that is how you can do an old film school effect. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll be back more with some more shortly. Cheers. Bye-bye.